so first just look into the circuit over here uh, this is this is a stm32 microcontroller okay this stm32 microcontroller is connected with a bluetooth device uh, serially this is the bluetooth device right uh, now uh, this stm32 microcontroller is also connected with something called uh, mpu6050 which contains uh, mpu in this sense microprocessing unit that means it has got an internal microprocessor to process the commands uh, this also contains an integrated accelerometer plus gyroscope which is called uh, gy521 so whenever you make uh, any uh, twist on this or whenever you make any acceleration or movement on this that movement will be captured by this stm32 through an interrupt service this stm32 further will be sending this data as you can see when whenever the data will be sent the bluetooth will be blinking like this okay so that data will be captured by the mobile now our overall objective over here is to use this with a knee cap and detect the knee abnormality so this is our knee cap where this device is going to be something like this so the user is going to wear this in his knees okay and as he moves okay if he has got a knee problem this limping will be captured by our service so our objective is to get this data into the mobile right so so we have a mobile app called lifers vag with uh, this particular symbol so we are going to launch this app first right this is the app now for this device to connect to this mobile we require to connect to the bluetooth of this one so as the bluetooth gets connected you can see the lines over here uh, w x y and z so because i am literally holding it straight this data is also straight now what we do over here is z axis is something which we are more concerned with after every 10 seconds we take an fft of the z axis and we put the result over here at the same time the result of once the FFT is been performed after every 10 seconds the ThinkSpeak data is updated. So this is our ThinkSpeak channel which gets updated after every 10 seconds. So these are the three components that we got to be sure of. So this is our data. You know after 10 seconds it gets connected and as you can see the movement is very nominal hence it is detecting something like a normal knee now suppose the person is limping a lot now that will be responded over here you can see that whenever the person is limping okay it will generate high frequency noise in the signal but if he is moving linearly okay the frequency will be very low frequency so even if you move even if the person moves with very normal uh, movement as you can see the movement will be captured but when he starts limping it will keep generating a very high frequency element into his knee now by taking the fft in the mobile device we will be able to know whether the person's limping is been very significant or not because if the person has got a knee problem this frequency is going to be very severe because he'll find it literally very difficult to move so once he uh, has got this limping problem that is going to be captured by here and it's going to show uh, the abnormality of the knee So, as you can clearly see now, because of this high frequency noises up to this time period, this is going to uh, show 
that the knee is abnormal. Also, the same data is being remotely uh, transmitted to uh, ThinkSpeak, uh, ThinkSpeak field. You can observe that spectral max at a particular time period has been extremely high in comparison to the other values. So any doctor which observes this remotely, okay, even he doesn't have the access to patient while the patient or the arthritis patient or patient with some kind of knee abnormality if he is moving the doctor even though he doesn't have the entire access of this data uh, he can observe this thing speak graph remotely and he'd be able to know you know what is the type of abnormality and if the patient actually has the abnormality or not again when you uh, when the movement is linear if the person is normally moving you can see there is a variation in the X, Y, Z, there is a displacement, but the overall high frequency component that comes in, so whenever we, we walk, the high frequency component that comes in will be very minimal. So it is, it is going to show normalcy. So to wrap it up again, this is our circuit. The entire workflow is STM32 captures accelerometer data which is uh, X, Y, Z and W which is the weight that is M into A acceleration and then pushes it uh, through this uh, uh, HC05 Bluetooth module. This, mod this data comes over here in our mobile app. Uh, this data is being stored for 10 seconds. After every 10 seconds the data's FFT is taken. Then we threshold it to detect whether it is normal or abnormal. At the same time after every 10 seconds, this data is mitigated into the ThinkSpeak cloud where we can perform the analysis. So if you delete the past data before every session, every session's data you are going to get as a fresh graph. There is an option called uh, delete channel data. I definitely would not be having the access to your delete. But if you open the channel, okay, there is an option called delete channel data. You can, you can delete the data over here now because there is a gap between yesterday and today you are seeing this connected line just delete the channel I mean delete data from the channel we have cleared the channel and this device is pretty much static right this device is pretty much static the movement is been almost nominal. So, I'm holding it pretty much straight. Now, if you look at your graph number 5, that will become almost steady. That is temporal max A. If you look at y-axis, y-axis deviation will come down and if you look at field number 5, the field number 5 will be almost static value. So even if the user moves a little bit, uh, field number 5 is not going to vary significantly. As you can see the value has come down. When the value comes down, it is going to show normal. For normal knees, this high frequency data is going to be very low okay so irrespective of however you move so if the user is moving if the user is walking still the high frequency component value that is graph number five is going to be almost zero as you can see as long as it shows normal that value is going to be remain to be almost near zero right just let us hold this steady let's see what is the effect so as you can see graph number 5 will be remaining close to uh, 0 value. Can you see this? As long as it shows normal, it will stay near 0. Yes. 
yes. right? Because there is no high frequency component. So even when the user moves, okay, without limping, even when there is a movement, when user moves without any limping, still that value is going to be remain to be near zero only. As you can see that I am making a movement, user is moving, but he is not uh, essentially limping. Okay, it's a linear movement. So whenever there is a linear movement, you can still see that that value is still nearer to zero. The moment user starts limping, okay, and he starts feeling this knee pain. The moment user starts feeling this knee pain, you know, there will be limping motion. He will find it little jittery. So while moving, his movement is going to be little jittery. Whenever his movement is going to be little jittery, okay, the high frequency component will increase. The moment high frequency component will increase, you can see that this is shooted up. When this is shooted up, it is going to detect it as the abnormal knee. Okay, so when the doctor asks the user to make a move, it's still normal because um, it is not the, as jittery as we expect. But when the user actually starts moving with uh, uh, too much limping and the high frequency component gets uh, significantly consistent you can see the uh, y and z it's almost like sinusoidal values okay because the user is limping here so once you do that okay once the next data set comes as the fft value shoots up so as the fft value So the, the more jittery it becomes, that value is going to go high. I have given a very high threshold which is like uh, 40, we can always uh, readjust that uh, threshold, right? Now the amplitude is about 25. So if it crosses 40, uh, it's going to show that it's an abnormal need. Obviously we can set it depending upon the gender, the person, the age, right? coming to about 38 I can I can give the threshold at around uh, 20 also shall I change the threshold to 20 yes sir to show abnormal I, mean, I do not know when you wear what happens we will check it once sir so that can be changed not a problem you also teach me, me also how to change that uh, value but that has to be done through the board okay. that will be very difficult for you to do it in android studio and transfer the code over so you have to you have to first do the testing okay, okay. this is now it is going to show abnormal know, because the value has gone up to 54. 54 whenever the value will be going that high oh my god whenever the value is going to be that high uh, it's going to be shown over here right? So 
the last value is showing is about 25 the next value it should be transmitted so whenever those kind of movement is there so you need to do the testing you need to tell me what exactly is the value uh, for you i'll change that and reset the code so this is a no brainer right okay sir.